Hey there kids, it's me, Mr. Creepypasta, and I promise this is only gonna take about one minute of your time, which is about two hits of that skip button. But don't hit it. I wanted to let you know about two quick, very quick, 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 quick things. I'm gonna be at San Japan again this year because I always go to San Japan. It's in San Antonio, Texas, August 30th through September 1st. I'll put a link in the description down below for that. And also I'm going to end up being back at MidoriCon for the first time in many, many years. And I'm really happy about that. MidoriCon is at the Deer Creek Lodge and Conference Center in Mount Sterling, Ohio. It's gonna be on September 13th through the 15th. And it's kind of unlike any other anime convention I've ever been to. And they let me do this thing where I get to tell scary stories by a campfire in the woods. And I love them for that. That's all. Less than a minute. On to tonight's story. When I was little, my cousin lived in this huge Victorian mansion. The kind that had secret passages and hidden rooms that you'd likely inherit from a dead great-grandparent. The estate was located in the middle of a desolate forest. With a total township population of 20 people. And every summer, my brother Jacob and I would be sent in to stay with our cousins for the duration of the season. Andrew was my age, one year older than Jacob, and Naomi was two years my elder. Andrew and Naomi were our best friends. Every summer, we'd have a blast playing in the forest and coming up with our own games to keep ourselves occupied. This house in particular had more secret passages and rooms than one could even begin to imagine, and Naomi knew them all like the back of her hand. Hey, Ava. Hey, guess where I am? Her voice emanated throughout our shared bedroom, always after bedtime. Where would she be at this time? The wall? Ceiling? All I knew is that it would never be where I expected. I peeked up from the book I was reading. I don't know. Where are you? I asked. She giggled from her hiding spot before popping out of the storage chest at the foot of her bed. Naomi, how'd you get in there? I asked excitedly. She climbed out of the chest and gestured for me to come over. Look, she said as she pointed to a small trap door on the floor. The chest was bottomless, allowing for the door to be usable. I peeked into the chest with wide eyes, excited to see the new secret passageway. I found the door in the bathroom closet, so I followed it and it led here. Cool, I exclaimed. A troublemaker's smirk appeared across Naomi's face. Want to go scare the boys? She asked through a giggle. Yeah. I said. She put her finger to her lips and hushed me as she pried open the paneling in the wall and led me into another crawl space. As soon as I stepped into the crawl space, I started to feel extremely uneasy. My body was trying to tell me that I shouldn't be here. We repressed our giggles as we crawled through the walls and eventually ending up in the closet of the bedroom that Andrew and Jacob were using. Boo! Naomi shouted as she threw open the closet door and jumped into the bedroom. Both boys screamed in fear, but all of us began laughing once they realized it was just us. Another secret passageway, Naomi? Andrew asked. Yeah, she said excitedly. How do you keep finding them? Jacob asked. Naomi shrugged. Oh. Do you feel scared when exploring? I asked her. Nah, she said. Oh. Of course. With all the house's secrets, our favorite game was hide and seek. We would play hide-and-seek whenever we got the chance to, and Naomi always won. Even if I found a spot that I was sure she wouldn't find, she always found it. Sometimes a single game would last hours, simply because no one could find Naomi. When we did find her, it was always in a secret passage or room that no one had seen before. The last time we played was the summer of 99. I was 8, Naomi was 10. We were staying up past our bedtime to play another round of hide-and-seek, and I was the seeker. I walked around the house and spare for the occasional floorboard creak. It was quiet. Naomi and Andrew's parents were in their room watching TV and Jacob, Andrew and Naomi were hiding. The house was creepy at night with dim lighting and an antique style to the furnishing. As an eight-year-old, I couldn't help but be creeped out. It always gave me a small thing of paranoia as if someone was living in the house besides us. I remember creeping around the house until I found Jacob and Andrew. They were both in the mansion's dining hall, Andrew under the table and Jacob in one of the many cabinets that lined the walls. Did you find Naomi yet? Andrew asked me. No, I said. Then both boys joined me to help find her. Only, we never did. We stayed up searching until the clock read 2 a.m. before we finally decided to forfeit. Okay, Naomi, you win! 
No answer. I walked around the house yelling for her, but I never got an answer, which was weird because we usually ended up forfeiting to her, and she would answer our calls when we did. After searching every last corner of the house, we couldn't find Naomi. Maybe she went outside? She wouldn't. She's afraid of the woods. Maybe she found the new crawl space? False. She would have still answered our shouts. We didn't want to bother her parents over at game, so we decided to go to bed, thinking maybe she'd show herself in the morning. When breakfast was served, Naomi still didn't show up. Where's Naomi? My aunt asked, glancing towards the plate that she'd set for her. I don't know, I said. Is she still sleeping? No, she wasn't even in her room last night. We played hide and seek and she never came out of her hiding spot, I said. The statement sent my aunt into a panic. She went to fetch my uncle. They searched for her all day, to no avail. It got to the point where they called the police to issue a missing persons report. The police searched the house. They didn't find her. What they did find, though, was a new passageway behind a bookshelf in the library. A dark tunnel. No one knew where it led, but it looked like it had been used recently. As I looked into it, I felt a feeling of dread, as if something was telling me to get away. For the next few days, Andrew, Jacob, and I attempted a lot of eavesdropping, failing every time to make sense of the hushed whispers we heard among the adults. My aunt and uncle, along with Andrew, ended up selling that house and moving. My brother and I never spent another summer there. I never found out what happened to her. And all my family members just act confused when I bring her up. All I know is, she must have found a pretty damn good hiding spot because no one has seen her in 20 years. Hey there once again kids, it's me, Mr. Creepypasta, and I just wanted to give you a big thank you for watching tonight's video. If you guys ever wanted to help support the show, you can always do so if you watch the show on youtube.com slash mrcreepypasta or find the Mr. Creepypasta Storytime podcast on iTunes, on Google Play, and on Spotify. And also, if you ever want to check out my wife's tea shop, it's etsy.com slash ivorymonoclete, where she sells hand-blended herbal teas in the theme of Dungeons and & Dragons and Harry Potter and Final Fantasy and the like. You can find the link for it, as well as many, many, many other links in the description down below. And, drumroll please, a big, big, big thank you to everybody supporting me at patreon.com slash mrcreepypasta. People such as... Tacia Lynn Ginobaga Arneo, Daniel Paulson, Trace Miles, Jordan Alexander Sanchez, Wayne Milstead, Dr. Strawberry, Chempinski, Ken Lando Higuchi, Brianna Ventine Jensen, Nicholas Saeed Elyasin, Buddy Burrows, Stephen Van Hus, Kai Albertson, Goonington, G Weevil 3, Chance Burnett, Diane Krause, Asia, Gabrielle DeBaca, The Red Oak Shield Virus, Cindy Barney, Titty Connoisseur, <laughs> really? Titty Connoisseur? Melissa Swegart, Dante Rao, Last Blade Song, Cross Rights, The Ginger Bros, Eliminator 86, Andrew Steinberg, Jason Sistma, Holy Realm, and Rafael Rodriguez. Thank you so much to you guys out there on Patreon, to all of you listening to either the podcast or the YouTube show. And that is everything, guys. Thank you so much for listening, and sweet dreams. <laughs>